you're watching Gears. Brought to you by Holly Performance Products. Fuel your passion. And Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, there's an old saying that if you wait long enough, what is old and outdated will eventually come back around and be new and desirable again. Now, while that might not be true with that box of pizza in your refrigerator, there is some truth to that in the automotive world. Just take a look at the crazy prices that people are paying for stuff at auction that nobody wanted just a few years ago. That's a great indicator of how things come back around. Wow, $400,000, amazing. What a Mika moment. And one thing that's enjoying a huge resurgence in popularity is the cargo van. Ford, Chevy, Dodge, it doesn't matter. People are once again being drawn to these boxes on wheels that are perfect for customizing in a million different ways. There's only one problem. They stopped making vans like this back in the 90s. So the aftermarket pretty much dried up on them. Nobody really knows what'll fit and what won't fit. And everybody's scared to put a modern computer controlled engine in them. They just don't want to mess with it. Well, hopefully we're here to change your mind on that because there are a lot of parts available for these and they make a great project if you plan them out right. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, the first thing that you want to do with any project is plan out the direction of the build. And since this is going to be a hot rod van, we started with the GM Performance LS427 engine and the matching 6L80E automatic. Then we added all of these Holly accessories to get a nice tight package to fit in that nice tight engine compartment. Now we're gonna turn our attention back to the rest of the van and get it ready to handle almost 600 horsepower. Okay, the first area of concern is the front suspension and brakes. And as you can see, this is the original suspension, and by the looks of it, it's never been apart. So we're just gonna replace it all. And that is the first big surprise that you're gonna find on these old vans. The lower control arms, the upper control arms, the spindles, the springs, the shocks, it's all pretty much the same stuff as what they used on the square body Chevy truck. And you got a lot of options there. So here's what we got. This all comes from LMC truck. And as you can see, we got lower tubular control arms, got all the bushings in place, the ball joints are in place, they're powder coated. We have matching upper control arms. Then we got two and a half inch drop spindles to drop the front end of that thing down a little bit. We got some new coil springs, we got some gas shocks, and we got all the hardware to replace all that nasty rusty stuff. However, it's not all square body stuff under here. Take a look. The tie rod ends, the pitman arm, the center link, the idler arm, these are all unique to the van. Fortunately, they're all available at your local auto parts store, so they're easy to get replacements for. Now, since we are on the subject of suspension and steering, one area that can be a pain in the butt on these vans is that steering column. Because obviously, most of us would like to have a tilt column, and if you're gonna put an automatic in here, none of this manual shift stuff is gonna work for you. Now in the past, if you wanted a tilt column, you had to hunt one down in a junkyard. Fortunately, there's a great solution in the aftermarket. Check it out. Now, since I did it specializes in aftermarket steering columns, we figured that they would have something that we could use on that van because there are no direct replacement steering columns for those vans. So we measured out a full tilt column just like you would a street rod. And then we got it with the tilt, the turn signals, the emergency flashers. You've got the shifter for the automatic. Everything is pre-wired. Then we got some double D shaft. We have a pivoting floor mount, the U-joints, everything that we're gonna need to put that column into that van. Okay, back underneath, the reason we haven't started replacing all of this suspension stuff is because we gotta go a lot deeper here if we're gonna do an engine swap. That cross member has to be dealt with, the engine mounts, and ultimately that engine have got to come out. And if you're gonna drop it all out the bottom, the suspension has gotta be out of the way. Now what I mean by that is that there are a couple of ways to pull an engine out of a van. One, you can take it out the front, which is a tight fit, or two, you can drop everything out the bottom, which is what GM did. Now obviously, if you're gonna do that, the suspension has to be out of the way, then you just come in here and unbolt the cross member 
from the frame and then you'll be able to drop the cross member and engine and everything down as one big package. Obviously to do this, you're gonna have to have a lift. But either way that you do it, the ultimate goal is to get this engine out of there and to swap out these engine mounts with those from a V8. Then we can start fitting the new engine and start putting all the new stuff on. Another thing to look at while you're underneath the vehicle is the structural integrity of the body and frame, meaning the rust situation. Because if it's rotten under here, you need to fix that before you go any further. And as you can see, we really lucked out on this one because it is super solid. However, you can see where there is surface rust on the floor and the rockers and on the frame in places. So now is the time to kill that and coat the bottom of the van with a rust preventative paint like POR15. You can get this from LMC Truck. Now this stuff is designed to paint right over the rust and it'll seal it up and stop it, even around seams and cracks. Another thing we need to modify under here is the fuel system because that LS7 not only needs more fuel, <laughs> it needs more fuel pressure. So we're gonna modify this original tank with one of those Holley drop-in electric fuel pumps. That's gonna give us the fuel that we need. And also, this rear end is gonna snap like a pretzel when we step on that engine. So we're gonna upgrade the rear end too, but not today. A successful automotive project takes planning and organization. But instead of using an old tablet or notebook, there's the Gears Deluxe Project Planning Book. This was designed to help you lay out a project, the parts, the tools, costs, and keep it organized with colored tabs, a pouch for receipts, and even a place to attach photos. If you decide to sell the vehicle, it serves as a complete history of what's been done. If you have a project or plan on starting one, the Gears Project Planning Book is the best way to lay it out and make it happen. Hey, welcome back to Gears on our classic Chevy van engine swap project. Now, so far we've laid out the LS7 engine and the automatic transmission that's going in the van, as well as the suspension and steering upgrades that are gonna lower the front and make this thing handle better. And we've also addressed any rust issues and the fuel system upgrades that we're gonna have to do as well. But what we haven't talked about is how exactly we're gonna bolt a modern LS engine and transmission into a classic van. And is it a bolt-in deal? Is there fabrication involved? I mean, those are the kind of questions that everybody wants to know. So let's take a look. Fortunately for motor mounts, Hooker has a whole line of engine mounts to allow you to drop an LS in just about anything. Take a look at this. Now these are engine mounts for the LS that will allow you to position that engine up to three inches forward or back, depending on which bracket you use. Now, of course, these are for the earlier style motor mount, which we're not gonna use, but they also have a similar setup for the clamshell style motor mount, which is what that van is gonna use. Now they have the engine bracket, they've got the cage unit, they've got the urethane insert, everything that you're gonna need to literally bolt an LS into an early van provided you use the engine pedestals we talked about earlier. Now, if you don't have those pedestals for a V8 Chevy van, you might be thinking, hey, how about I use some brand new pedestals from a square body Chevy truck? <laughs> that's a good thought, but no. That's a completely different design, completely different deal. They are not compatible. You've got to use those V8 motor mounts from a V8 van that you get out of a junkyard, at least until somebody decides to repop them. Now, transmission cross member is a little more involved because nobody makes a bolt-in transmission cross member for those transmissions. So the best that you can do is get a universal cross member like this. We got this from LMC truck and it is for a square body Chevy truck. So you can just figure that you're gonna have to modify the ends so it will fit your van. Okay, another thing you need to plan for when you're doing an engine swap is the exhaust system. Now obviously underneath a van, you've got all kinds of room to run dual exhaust out the back or out the sides or dump it underneath or whatever. But since nothing says vintage hot rod van like side exhaust, that's what we're gonna do. Check it out. 
We got this crazy Zoomy exhaust tip system from a place called Two Tall Interiors. And even though they specialize in old school interiors for hot rods and sports cars, they also have a thing for functional Zoomy pipes. So they build them in several configurations. Now, what you're looking at here is a fully functional Zoomy tip that is designed to bolt after your muffler and then allow you to run your exhaust out wherever you want, at the side of the vehicle, in the back, in the side, out the front, wherever you think you want to put them. Now, just in case you're wondering, these are four functional tips. A lot of times only one is functional and the other three are fake. Not with two tall interiors. No, it's all real. So you got four pipes bellowing sound and with the kit, you also get your choice of tips. So you can go nice and low and subtle or you can go big and bold with the pipe organ look, which I really like, or the straight tip or the flared tip. So if you're thinking about putting side pipes on your van or your truck, you may want to reconsider because these are going to look so much better and sound so much cooler. Now, since the placement of side exhaust kind of goes hand in hand with the stance of the vehicle, Let's talk wheels and tires. Now on a van, you got a couple of choices here. You can slam it down on the ground, or you can rake it toward the front and put wide tires on the back for that classic hot rod van look, which is more the way we're going, but with a twist. So we got these wheels from Halibrand. This is the sprint wheel. It's gonna give us that classic polished aluminum mag look, but the sizes are a little bit different. We're going 19 in the front and a 20 on the rear. It's going to give us a modern look and also give us room to put bigger brakes on this thing. Now, Halibrand makes these wheels in the sizes and back spacings to bolt right onto your square body Chevy trucks. Problem is, the fitment on the van's a little different. But if you're going to do the raked look with the wider tires, you're in luck. Let's take a look. Now, for wheels on the front, we're using the 19 by 8.5 inch wide with a 4.5 inch back space. And we've wrapped them in Mickey Thompson Street Comp rubber, size 25540. As you can see, it brings the rubber right out to the edge of the fender, which is going to look awesome once we get this thing on the ground and get the two and a half inch drop on the front. Now on the rear, we're going a little wider. We're using a 20 by 10 inch rim with a four inch backspace, and we've wrapped it in 27540 rubber. As you can see, it brings the tire about an inch out past the fender for that fat tire look that we're after. Then when you keep in mind that those zoomies are going to exit about here, <laughs> that's going to look awesome. Now, one other thing that you have to upgrade when you're doing a V8 swap is that radiator. Because that little six-cylinder radiator is not going to cool that engine. Fortunately, the radiator is something that the van and the square body truck have in common. So whatever fits the truck will also fit the van. So we went to Frostbite and got this three-row all-aluminum radiator that's designed to drop an LS into a square body Chevy truck. Now, as you can see, it's got all the saddle mounts, it's got the fittings, and they are in just the right place to hook up your LS. And like we've shown you before, you can also get a Frostbite aluminum fan shroud, dual high performance fans, and the electrical relay system to keep everything cool. Now, I know this is a lot of stuff that we've laid out here, and some of you might be thinking, but you haven't done anything. Oh yeah, yes we have. Because the reason you want to lay everything out like this first is because all these parts work together. For example, you have to pull off the old suspension to get the old engine out. But you don't want to put the new suspension on yet because you have to fit the new engine in first. And you can't fit the new engine in until you get all the accessories in place because those are going to affect the fitment. Same thing with the radiator. Got to get the engine in before you can fit the new radiator. Also, the exhaust system. You got to have the engine in place and know where your cross members are going to be for your transmission before you can fit the exhaust. So you can see everything works together here. And the easiest, most efficient way to do a project like this is to get as much as you can, lay it all out, and then attack your work. If you do it that way, you will be surprised how quickly it'll go together. You know, one of the first true freedoms you experience as a kid is that first bicycle. 
Man, it becomes your transportation to the world, or at least the local neighborhood. And in my neighborhood, man, we all had bikes. And we'd stick playing cards in the spokes, and we'd suck on black licorice, make it look like we were big biker dudes, and it was magic. But a bike wasn't just about transportation. No, it became an extension of your personality. And there were all kinds of bikes out there. There were 10 speeds, there were mountain bikes, there were stingrays, there were BMX bikes, and they all had their strengths and weaknesses. And that's where the idea for the story of the Purple Bicycle came from. Because just like a bike might wish it had the talents or skills of another bike, so do we sometimes overlook our God-given talents and wish we had somebody else's talents, skills, because they seem to be better than ours. It's a simple lesson, but something we all need to be reminded of from time to time. And now it's time for another quick tip. Today's quick tip has to do with crate engines or new engines, and more specifically, this little tag right there. Now, obviously, that means that there is no oil in this engine. That's how they usually come from the manufacturers or the builders. So the question is, what oil do you put in and how do you break a new engine in? Well, one school of thought is that people run out and buy all of the good synthetic oils and all of the additives and put them all in the engine because obviously you want to protect your investment, right? Well, the problem is if you do that, it's a good chance you're going to end up with an oil burner because that won't allow the engine to break in properly and seal up like it's supposed to. So, what do you do? Well, most crate engines like this will come with an instruction manual that will tell you what kind of oil to use and what the break-in interval is. But if you don't get this, a good rule of thumb is to break in an engine with conventional oil or better yet, a break-in oil. Now you see it says break-in oil right there on the bottle. A lot of people make this stuff. It has more zinc in it, more protectant to help protect the parts as they're working in. Then after a break-in period of about 500 miles, drain everything out then you can put in the oil that you're going to run for the life of the engine. That's also when you can start putting in additives and that kind of thing if that's what you want to do. If you do it this way, your engine will be broken in properly and you'll get hundreds of thousands of miles of use out of your new crate engine. If you'd like more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. And now, Coating Tech, brought to you by Jet Hot High Performance Coatings unbeatable protection, performance, and service since 1982. Everybody knows that the exhaust system is a major source of heat, not only under the hood, but also under the car. And there's basically two ways to reduce heat coming from an exhaust system, with a ceramic coating like that, or with an exhaust wrap like this. The question is, which one do you use? Well, it depends. Let's take a look. A ceramic coating is a professionally installed coating that's designed to not only protect the surface metal from corrosion, but also reduce the surface temperature and add a nice looking coating all at the same time. Now the only downside to a ceramic coating is you can't do it yourself and they cost more than a wrap. An exhaust wrap on the other hand is made out of a special woven heat resistant fabric that you carefully wrap around each individual pipe and fasten with a metal clip. Now, wraps have a certain high performance racing look that is really popular, but the quality of that look depends entirely on how much time you spend putting the wrap on, because if you get in a hurry and put this on crooked, it's gonna look terrible. However, because of their thickness, a wrap does a really good job of lowering temperatures and keeping your heat down. But there are some weaknesses to a wrap. The first is, since it is a fabric, as you can see, it can get caught on things. It'll start to fray, it'll start to wear over time. Also, it is absorbent. So whatever you get on there is going to soak in and lay right up against those pipes until it burns off. So that can cause corrosion. If it's gas or oil, that can cause a fire hazard. So you have to keep them clean. Also, they start to look bad over time because of the things you spill on them. So you can pretty much figure on a wrap, probably replacing it about every six months, depending on how you're using it. 
Now, a ceramic coating, on the other hand, will also lower temperatures, but this is a permanent solution. You can bang this stuff around. It is not going to burn off. It's not going to chip off. You might put a mark in it, but it'll buff right back out of there. And also, anything that you might spill on it or spray on it will wipe right off. It will not discolor. They'll stay looking good <laughs> forever. Now, since these are actually bonded right to the metal, as you can see, this is a rusty header, and it was hit with some jet hot coating about 15 years ago. And if you look really close, there is no edge between the two. There's no way to separate the coating from the metal. This is permanent. This is not coming off. And that's it. You have your ceramic coating and your wrap. Both are going to drop temperatures, and that's good. But from there on out, it's completely different. The ceramic coating is permanent. You never have to mess with it again. The wrap, you're going to have to do maintenance on it, and you're going to have to eventually replace it. However, the wrap is designed for the do-it-yourselfer. So you can do this in your garage so it's going to be cheaper. The coating takes a professional application, so it's going to be more expensive. Also, the ceramic coating is available in all kinds of different colors and finishes. The wrap is pretty much what you see. It's going to be a wrap. Also, for durability, the wrap is going to look as good as what you happen to spill on it. The ceramic coating, most of those come with a lifetime warranty to look good. So, as you can see, you've got some choices when it comes to reducing heat. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Joe, and he is from East Alton, Illinois. And his project is a 1959 Volkswagen Bug but not the typical Volkswagen bug, because this is not the typical story. Because Joe says that he was diagnosed at age 43 with Parkinson's disease. Man, that is young for Parkinson's. And he said that he got to shaking so bad that he couldn't even work on cars anymore. And he said that his wife told him, she said, you need to build something unique while you still can. Man, what an awesome wife. So he got on some medication and he got with his friend Nate and his wife and they started to lay out a project for a 59 Volkswagen gasser. Yeah, I've never seen one of those. Now check this thing out. He said he built the frame over the four or five years. He made the suspension. He did the firewall, the floorboards, and he said everything that he couldn't do when his shaking got so bad, his friends came in and helped him do. Man, that is what hot rodding is all about. Now for the drivetrain, I know you're wondering about this. It's got a 383 stroker in it. 350 turbo, he set up the rear end to run at the drag strip. Now, he said he competed in Drag Week in 2021, and he won the Spirit of Drag Week award. Also, he says his fastest time is an 11.9, but he said the car will run deep into the 11s if he can keep his foot in the gas. <laughs> yeah, looking at the stance of this thing, I bet that gets kind of squirrely at the top end. Guys, this is such a great story for so many reasons. So to recognize such a great project, we went to Woodward Fab and we're gonna give you one of these little wheelies. Now what this is, is a fully functional miniature English wheel. You've got all the anvils and everything that you're gonna need to do all kinds of nice, small, cool little shaping projects. And that'll be great therapy on your Parkinson's too. Also, since you're obviously a real gearhead, we're gonna give you one of our Gears t-shirts. And then we're also gonna give you one of these deluxe project planning books. This way you'll be able to keep track of everything that you've done to that Volkswagen. Then we're gonna give you a gift card from Holly to help offset some of the costs of that project. And then we're gonna give you a stunt double die cast so you can go four wheeling sometimes. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you wanna get in on this and get your project featured on the show, you gotta send it to us. Go to our website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into What Are You Working On? The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation. You can also see Gears episodes for free on our YouTube channel and become a channel member. That way you get bonus content and you get early access to all the new episodes. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime for Gears and the Gears Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're a radio person, Make sure you check out our podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. 
All right, that wraps it up for us today. Hopefully this inspires you to get out there and work on something yourself and get involved with the hot rod community. I mean, there's nothing better than getting together with a bunch of hot rodders and working on a project. So get out there, work on something. We'll see you next time.